The tools chosen by the traditional luthier are rooted in the physical craft of working and shaping materials, forming the very physics of the instrument they build. But the new role of digital luthiers, designing digital musical instruments, now require new, very different tools. My name is Nathan Rennie, and I'm a PhD student at the University of West England, and on behalf of my co-authors and I, I'm presenting our paper, Studying How Digital Luthiers Choose Their Tools. In this paper, we analysed 27 interviews with prominent digital luthiers using reflexive thematic analysis. We generate themes titled The Pragmatist, A Product of Our Environment, and Intentions. Our work contributes to the literature on the designer-tool relationship, most significantly adding to the understanding of how digital luthiers select the tools they use. Our themes provide narratives that demonstrate designers' pragmatic rationalisation processes and the impact of environmental influences, as well as how these problems relate to challenges such as social creativity and meta-design. To begin, let us first contextualise the field of digital luthiery. We can first consider the term luthier, defined as one who makes stringed musical instruments, such as violins or guitars. For digital luthery, the term luthier is borrowed to refer to someone who designs digital instruments rather than stringed instruments. We see the adoption of this term throughout the growing body of literature and suggest that this developed from the usage of Buxton and in turn Jorda and Bongus. To briefly introduce the field of digital luthery, the Nine community provides an obvious starting point. With its origins as a workshop at the ACM conference, CHI, in 2001, it has since developed into an annual conference, particularly focused on new musical interface design. Here and in many related conferences, we can see a rich field of research exploring digital musical instruments, often referred to as DMI. Of course, DMI exist beyond the fields of research and are quite literally changing the way we make and perform music with many new digital instruments produced at a variety of scales, from musical controllers to entirely new standalone instruments. We take the role of the digital luthier to be designing digital musical instruments, but it is also important to consider that this role is a dynamic and fluid one. Typically, digital luthiers often embrace a multifaceted role in this craft process, blurring the boundary between designer, builder and player of an instrument. Jordan's thesis very much introduces the term in this context. As Chattel and Jackson put it, artists act as creative, critical users of tools, both computational and otherwise, whose practice has the potential to reveal new insights and understandings about the world in which we live. In the field of digital luthery, we see that much of the existing research is very much focused on this perspective, with instrument design being deeply coupled with the designer's art. But of course, some digital luthiers also work on commercial instruments with a role resembling that of a software or hardware engineer. We also see digital luthiers making instruments as a mechanism for research itself. This continuum of motivations and applications of the creation of DMI make the role of digital luthiery a very diverse and interesting area of HCI. We set out to explore three research questions. Why and how do instrument designers pick their tools? What distinct problem spaces do instrument designers consider to be involved in instrument design? And how do instrument designers define a digital musical instrument? To explore these questions, we carried out open-ended interviews with 27 digital luthiers using a purposeful sampling strategy. This strategy aimed to incorporate digital musical instruments with many modes of interaction and motivations for instrument development. Instruments included both open source and proprietary instruments, with some instruments representing a hybrid of the two. For example, an instrument with open source software only. Instruments also varied from bespoke instruments designed for an individual to instruments intended for commercial mass market production. For more details on our methodology, see our paper and a reference to our pre-publication. We analysed interviews using reflexive thematic analysis, an approach to qualitative analysis introduced by Braun and Clark. This approach aimed to draw on the knowledge and experience of the research team to examine and generate themes using multi-perspective reflexive practice. In this study, two coders familiarised themselves with and coded the transcripts. The research team then met regularly to discuss and iterate around the analysis process. This process resulted in around 900 codes, which we interactively explored in order to produce increasingly refined themes relating to our research questions. Through our thematic analysis, we generated three shared narratives from participants' experiences. 
The first theme, the pragmatist, considers the prevalent idea that tools are selected for pragmatic reasons. We see this when participant 23 states, I think my choice of language at the moment, I must say, it's very pragmatic. Whilst the desired attributes of tools varied, with examples such as good performance, interoperability, ease of use or availability being mentioned, participants largely shared the sense of making their choices based on a cost-benefit analysis of how the tool can solve their most prominent design challenges. We saw two sides to this pragmatic process, one focusing on addressing technical issues and another that addressed the limitations of the individual or team. Individuals, for example, may bias towards tools that save time, whereas a commercial project with a team may prioritise maintainability. Fundamentally, pragmatic choices tend to be the most immediate answer for participants' tool choices. Our second theme explores the environmental influences that impact tool selection. Participants demonstrated a clear awareness of how institutions such as schools or universities, or communities such as online forums and industry, influence the tools they use. Digital luthiers appear to have a clear and unique social and cultural environment in which they work, composed of the communities they engage with. This environment provides a set of pressures that influence tool choice by preserving an intuitive sense of the affordances and constraints that a tool presents. This gives rise to common terms such as industry standard, which interestingly extends beyond influencing just commercial designers. Our final theme focuses on how the intended use for the instrument being designed also steers the selection of tools used to create it. This shared narrative includes many differing requirements and accounts for the unique factors of each instrument and the constraints they place on tool selection. Despite this, we see some very prevalent requirements emerge, such as the need to facilitate social creativity. We see, we see this demonstrated in the capacity for teams to collaborate, often in the case of research, commercial or open source design. However, individuals also often require social creativity through ongoing feedback during the design process or the accessible documentation of the tools they use. To conclude this study, we discuss our findings in the context of Stoltman and Pierce's work, demonstrating further complexity in digital luthiers' espoused theory and theory in use. We also contextualise the field of digital luthiery as a rich and mature example of social creativity and meta-design, and suggest that we can look to digital luthiery to further explore these ideas. Due to the time limitations in this presentation, we encourage you to read our paper and also add that our transcripts and resources have been made accessible to help support future work in this area. Thanks for listening.